Hello, I am Michael Sullivan. I am the CEO of Life Model Works, and I have the joy of being a colleague with Dr. Jim Wilder. Uh, Jim and I are doing some uh, video chats with uh, folks that we know and love, uh, and we're calling them Renovated Lives, and it relates to a new book that'll be out in 2020 in the spring. And Jim, tell us a little bit about that book. Well, I'm privileged to be part of writing the book Renovated. Um, it's going to be out with Nav Press in the spring of 2020. It's on the neuroscience of spiritual life, based on my interactions with Dallas Willard, and it's at the intersection of spiritual formation and character formation. So, um, and it's something that you uh, have an interesting phrase for. Yes, I do. Uh, yeah, I, when I think of the spiritual disciplines, I think of them as humility drills, and they are the fundamentals of a spiritual life. Uh, you know, the disciplines of engagement, the disciplines of abstinence that the New Testament talks about in many places. And so those are the basics. And I think if we do the basics really well, it puts us in a really good posture to grow and mature. Uh, but there are other things besides the disciplines that we need in our lives to mature. And that's what the book is about. So the humility drills relate then to the relational brain skills or the maturity skills that the life model has uh, outlined in many different books in many different ways. So I just think of them as humility drills, relational skills, and they fit together in a really cool way. Well, in preparing to write the book, Renovated, I interviewed a number of people who experienced both the spiritual disciplines and uh, brain skill training. And today I would like to introduce uh, our guest, Chris Coursey, who's right been at that intersection. Now, he and Jen actually set up and ran the Heart and Soul Conference where the Dallas portion of this book was recorded. So they were the hosts for all of that. Uh, Chris himself has an incredible gift for taking ideas and creating exercises out of it. So you have to train to do relational skills, and that's what uh, Chris uh, has been doing. And he's actually my pioneering partner in the relational skills development. When we started out, we didn't know if it could be done. And uh, so he helped to develop that. He's an author, an international speaker, and training uh, trainer. And so I'm really pleased to um, welcome you, Chris, and uh, talk with you today about this intersection of um, spiritual uh, disciplines and brain skill training. Yes, thank you, guys. I'm glad to be here. Uh, it's been an absolute joy to be able to, in many ways, just grow up in ministry with this uh, umbrella of of skills and the life models. So I consider myself um, in many ways a product of a lot of this, just spending half of my life learning and doing it. So I'm greatly honored to be to be here today. Well, Chris, we love and honor you. And uh, tell us a little bit about your experience in life with uh, Dallas Willard and his material. Yes. Well, actually, I came across Dallas Willard's material um, because I came across Jim Wilder. Um, when I had the opportunity to start working with Jim, when um, all these ideas were forming in his head about training and applying uh, important skills, um, one of the first assignments Jim uh, gave me was to read The Divine Conspiracy by Dallas Willard. And, um, and so my job was to, to read and assimilate the, the ideas and the, and the concepts and, in, and at times feed it back to Jim. Like, here's what I'm learning. Here's what's happening in me as I'm reading this. Um, and it, it just opened my eyes. You know, I would read um, a, a page and my brain was full and I had to digest that. And, and in many cases, a paragraph or a sentence I would just read and go, wow, why didn't I hear about this growing up in the church? Like, this is amazing. This is a gold mine. Uh, it, it, it really impacted me deeply reading that book. And that was the start of learning Dallas's material. And just in general, uh, as you think about your spiritual life and your spiritual growth through the years, what would, are there any disciplines that have stood out to you that have been especially helpful? Yeah, you know, um, the rest, the the Sabbath, the rest is honestly was 
really hard at first when I started to practice this. It just, my, my mind did not want to do it, but I forced myself and I would practice this. Um, and honestly, it, it, it surprised me how much it started to change how I felt and how I approached life and ministry because I would crave rest after a while if I didn't spend some regular time. So that right there was a big one. Um, the quieting, the solitude was also a big one. Um, the fasting was probably another one really hard one that I, I didn't like necessarily, but uh, when I would fast, it, it was very helpful. I found it helpful, especially in my own maturity, trying to learn to tame my cravings. Uh, I'd learned that from Jim, uh, just the, the, the significance of fasting and how helpful it can be. So when I started to fast, whether it was food or television or whatever it was, it, it was good. It was very meaningful. Um, and generosity, I try to live my life with just this, this lens of looking for opportunities to be generous. Um, it's just one of those, I really want that defining my character to be a generous person. So I would say generosity uh, was, was honestly another big one as well as service. I know you could talk a long time about your relationship. I, I could talk a lot of this You stuff. could talk a long time about your relationship with Jim Wilder. This is where oh, I'm yeah. going, going okay. next. Oh, yeah. But I do want to just ask for a few uh, snippets of how you first connected with him and the life model. Uh, give us a little insight into that. You know, my colleagues uh, knew Jim. Um, back when I started ministry in the 90s, um, there was a, it was kind of a small group in some ways with people. There's a certain motivated pocket of Christian counselors and and missionaries who are really trying to be effective at helping to serve severely traumatized people. So my colleagues already kind of knew Jim, but I had the chance to read. Um, it was a manuscript. It was in a folder. It was living from the heart Jesus gave you. Um, and I, I, I was in a phase of just trying to learn as much as I could learn. And this happened to be in a stack of materials that I came across. And when I started reading this, material it just basically explained my life and it explained those that I was serving and helping and um, and then soon thereafter I actually had the chance to listen to Jim um, teaching and speaking on joy and when I started to listen to Jim I just thought this guy is on to something like you know I just want to sit at his feet and listen and learn and just glean as much as I could glean because Jim was teaching things that intuitively made sense to me, but it was contrary to my church experience as well as my family and my community. So when I was uh, just encountering what Jim was teaching on the life model, it, it sparked something in me, a hunger and an excitement. And honestly, I just wanted more. So it was the start of some really good things. That's great. Uh, it's wonderful to see you guys together and to witness your fellowship and your friendship and your colleagueship in the kingdom. So a lot of people have been touched yeah. by that. <laughs> yeah. So, Hey, when you think about spiritual disciplines, the classic disciplines, and you think about the relational brain skills, what's the, what's the interface there? What's the difference between them? And, and uh, you know, the classic disciplines are well known, but the relational brain skills are not. So how important are these together? You know, they're complementary for me as I was learning about the disciplines and starting to work with Jim and learning about relational skills. Um, you know, I found that the the relational skills were kind of like the the hidden ingredient here with the disciplines. There was already a lot of good things happening in my character when I was using the disciplines, but in many ways, um, the disciplines worked well until I started interacting with people. And then all this good stuff in my head just didn't translate to my people interactions, right? So the relational skills really um, added this component of uh, fleshing out the disciplines in many ways. Like, how do I now live in Christian community? And, and how do I interact with other humans? And how do I even interact with the living God? Um, and so the skills provided what I what I encountered was um, a, a missing ingredient that I really didn't fully understand until I learned about relational skills. And mm. then the light bulb went on and I thought, oh, wow. They, which makes this, this, the disciplines even richer when you start to bring in the relational skills. Yeah. And, you know, just for our listeners uh, and watchers, uh, 
if there was anybody to ask about the 19 brain skills, it'd be you. So give us a few of them that stand out to you that you've seen really change people's lives significantly. Well, you know, the identify maturity skill is one of the skills uh, for me that also provided a roadmap. I'm, I know I would not be in ministry anymore if it wasn't working with Jim Wilder and um, using relational skills. And maturity was definitely one of those skills that it was a reason I kept bottoming out relationally. And at the time, I didn't know why until I started to understand maturity. Um, and, you know, helping to know when it's time to take a breather when you interact with people, that honestly has just been revolutionary mm. for my, myself, my family, my interactions, just learning to take a breath and recognizing that in myself, recognizing that in other people, um, and learning solutions for pain. Honestly, that skill is a game changer just recognizing what level of pain people are in what will help what will hurt um, that i use that constantly and it's it's just the game changer relationally so they're they're all rich i mean the 19 we could talk about all day but those yeah. are a few that just kind of pop I'm you know, guessing last night, uh, chris i was talking to a couple that you trained and they were talking about that knowing when to take a breather and they said, you know, up until we learned how to teach that, it wasn't just a matter of doing it, but learning how to teach that. They had these church groups where people always talked over each other and, and you know, they could never kind of make the thing flow. But once they taught that skill, wow. it really changed the whole dynamic of their church small groups. And they're very appreciative wow. of that. Oh, that's good to hear. That is, that, that's an exciting report. I mean, that is the beauty of these skills. It just changes things quickly. So sometimes when I think about the, the two, uh, I think of the classic disciplines as the spiritual disciplines, like this is what makes us spiritual people, yeah. you know, godly people. But, the, but the, the brain skills are about being a human. And so, you know, we need to, a lot of Christians need to learn again what it means to be human. And, and we want all human beings to mature. And so our message is not just for believers, it's also for pre-Christians, people we want to become, we want them to believe in Jesus, but we still want them to mature as well. And so we have a, a message for the culture as well. Yes, amen. That's right. <laughs> so, hey, Jim Wilder, tell us a little bit more about uh, the book and uh, your process with that and just any kind of observations from my conversation here with Chris. Well, uh, the wonderful thing about Chris' uh, participation in this is that he actually set up the, and directed the time with Dallas Willard and invited a whole bunch of people involved in spiritual formation. It was the first conversation I really heard about how does emotional and relational maturity overlap and connect with spiritual maturity. And Dallas was very deliberate about saying that uh, they include the same things. The human character is part of spiritual maturity. You can't claim to be spiritually mature and not know how to relate to and love other people. And so Chris has been a very significant person at that intersection right from the beginning of the discussion. And I thank you for your participation and letting us interview you here today, Chris. Yes, it's a pleasure. It's good to be here. And, and the, the Heart and Soul event was just a highlight for sure, being able to be a part of that. So, so the book's coming out in 2020. It's called Renovated uh, God, Dallas Willard, and the Church That Transformed. So, hey, Chris, you've probably read the manuscript. What, give us a little, how did it impact you when you read it? Oh, boy. Well, I had the same experience as I would read Jim's book. Um, you know, I would read a little bit, you know, whether it's a sentence or a paragraph or a page, and just um, – have a profound excitement for what I was um, learning and how what Jim writes um, incredibly profoundly honors Dallas and his work as well as just add substance, which I didn't even know was humanly possible, but it, Jim was able to do that with this book. And honestly, it's, I think everyone who picks up this book will have a hard time let it, putting it down because it's, it is a very rich uh, exciting experience to go through that book. It's very meaningful. I, I have an intuition that we're in the uh, beginning days of a relational revolution that the world needs, that the church needs. It, I think the church is supposed to lead the revolution, so it needs to hit the church first. 
Yeah. But I think that it's going to happen because there's, you know, so much dehumanization that's happened in Western culture uh, and other cultures as well. And we've got to reclaim this rehumanization through Christ of, of what it means to be a human being and, 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 and how to connect, how to connect with our creator and our redeemer and how to connect with each other. Uh, we're overwhelmed by so many dehumanizing forces. So we need a pushback. So guys, we're on the forefront. I think the vanguard of a pushback uh, yes. to the world uh, that's going to bring a lot of uh, joy because uh, relationships, uh, somebody told me relationships are about joy. So, and joy is relational in nature. Yeah. I heard, I heard that rumor. You two guys, actually. That's <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well said. Well said, Michael. All right, you guys. Well, we'll finish up here. So thank you so much for uh, this time, Chris. We honor you and bless you. Thank you. Thank you. It's good to be here. Thank All right. You. Have a blessed day. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.